DevExpress editors allow you to quickly create business applications for the web. Our set of ASP.NET controls are lightweight and easy to work with. Let's take a look at how to create an entry form. Here I have an ASP.NET web forms project. Let's drop the ASPX combo box control on the form. The controls smart tag appears. Here you can choose a data source or create a new one, as well as define control specific settings, themes, and so on. The property window contains a number of control settings that allow you to fully customize the control's behavior as well as the look and feel. Let's define the combo box ID and caption. You'll see that the control shows a label with a colon. The caption settings allow you to fully customize the caption appearance. For example, I can set the caption position to any side of the editor. DevExpress data editors fully support right-to-left languages such as Arabic and Hebrew, so you can rely on our editor controls when creating international web pages that require support for right-to-left reading order as well as the mirroring of UI elements. In the code behind, I have an employee class that has the getEmployees static method. This method returns a list with two objects. On the page load, I define a data source for the combo box. Define the value field. This is the ID field. And call the data bind method. At design time, I can define the value type for the combo box control. I'll set it to integer because the ID field is of integer type. The combo box control can display its drop down list as a grid with several columns. In the smart tag, click the columns item. Here, I'll add two columns bound to the data source fields defined in the field name property. For this project, I'll bind the combo box columns to the first name and last name fields of the employee class. And let's take a look at the result in a browser. When I click the drop down button, the two column list appears. I can select any record. The editor displays column values separated by the semicolon. Let's change from a semicolon to an empty space. To do this, we'll go back to Visual Studio and in the combo box properties define the display format string property value. Let's save it and reload the page in a browser. Now when I select a value and remove focus from the combo box, it displays the selected value fields separated by a space. The form layout control allows you to create pixel perfect designed forms. I'll place the control on the page. In the smart tag, I can define the data source, theme, and edit the form layout. The layout items editor allows you to add the layout items and groups, combine, and customize them. I can also add a layout item with a nested data editor. Note that you can nest any control into the layout item, even a third party one. To quickly add all the necessary layout items, I can automatically retrieve them from any class of my project. Click Retrieve Items and select the Employee class. The Layout Items editor automatically generates layout items for the data source fields. For the integer field, it generates a layout item with a spin edit. For string fields, a text box, date time, date edit, and for Boolean, a check box. I remove the ID field and hit OK. I'll define the controls ID at design time. Let's enable editing of the selected employee record. To do this, I handle the combo boxes selected index changed server event. In the event handler code, I get the selected item and bind the form layout control to this item. I set the combo box auto postback property to true so that the server event is performed correctly. Let's take a look at the result in a browser. 
Here you can see the edit form with the DevExpress data editors, text boxes, date editors that allow you to efficiently pick the required date, and a checkbox. When I select a record from the combo box, the record fields become available in the edit form. If we want, we can change the layout and the data editors to make the form more user-friendly. In the designer, I bring up the layout item editor. I want to separate the form fields into two categories, personal and work. To do this, I add two layout groups and define their captions. Then I move the layout items to the corresponding groups. The notes field contains a lot of text, so it's better to use the memo editor for editing this field's values. Go to the change to item and select a layout item with an ASPX memo editor. The form layout control supports multi-column layouts. For each layout group, I set the call count property to two. I can also change each layout group decoration. I can also change each layout group decoration. Each layout item can fit several columns. To make the notes layout item wider, just set its call span property to two. The memo editor has a default width of 170 pixels. I change it to 100%. And to align layout item captions in all the groups, set the corresponding property to true. Let's take a look at the result in a browser. Now the edit form contains two logical groups. Its editors are perfectly aligned, and the notes section is great for editing large texts. All the editors are still fully functional. Another great feature of our data editors is mask editing. The date editors allow you to set the mask behavior out of the box by setting a corresponding property. Let's define the mask for a text box that allows you to edit phone numbers. In the text box mask settings, you can define the required mask manually or select any of the predefined masks, be it a numeric range, a phone number, a short date, or a time mask. We'll use the phone number mask. We can define the text of an error message displayed when an input value doesn't match. To help end users understand the required format of a phone number, we can show them the help text. Note that the help text look and feel is fully customizable. Let's take a look at the result in a browser. Now our text box control displays a mask for entering phone numbers. Under the editor, the help text is displayed. Let's take a look at the keyboard support. If I delete the entered phone number, the mask placeholders become visible. I can just enter the digits and the cursor will automatically move to the next placeholder. The mask prevents me from entering extra symbols. If the entered value is incomplete and the editor loses focus, the error message appears. If we correct it, the error message disappears automatically. The enabled mask behavior for the date editors allows end users to easily change the editor value using the mouse wheel. You can easily navigate the mask placeholders and change the editor values using the keyboard arrow keys. The DevExpress data editors provide a fully functional validation mechanism available both on the client and server sides. For example, let's make the first name and the last name fields required. I go to the text box validation settings and set the is required property to true. Then define the associated error text. I can also define a way to visualize errors. Then I repeat the same steps for the second text box. But here, I'll define the other way of displaying validation errors. Let's take a look at the result in the browser. Now the required marks are automatically displayed near the editors of the required fields. 
If I remove the first name, the error message appears. It shows an icon that displays error text when you hover the mouse over. The next editor displays an error text next to the error image. Our controls ship with an icon library that contains a lot of selections for most actions, commands, and so on. I'll demonstrate the icon for our button edit control. The button edit control is a text box that can display buttons within the edit area. For this example, a button will clear the entered value. Let's set the visual icon for this button. In the Buttons Editor, go to Image Settings and pick a required icon within the Icon ID field. The DevExpress Data Editors, as well as other DevExpress controls, have the client-side API that allows you to fully manipulate the control on the client-side without sending callbacks to the server. The Smart Tag allows me to easily navigate to the client API documentation. Here's a topic that lists all the JS classes that implement the client-side functionality of ASPX editors. I'll open the ASPX Client Button Editor class topic. This class represents the client equivalent of the server ASPX button edit control. It has a lot of useful methods. I want to clear the editor value on a button click so I can use the setText method. This topic contains the method syntax, its parameter, and a code sample. Let's return to Visual Studio. In the Button Editor Smart Tag, I select the Client Side Events item. The Opened dialog allows me to define the handlers for all the editor's client events. Here, I need to define the handler for the button click client event. To send the event, i.e., the button edit, I call the setText method and pass an empty string to this method as a parameter. Let's take a look at the result in a browser. Now when I click the button edits button, the text content is removed, or better yet, replaced by an empty string. If I enter any other text, clicking the button removes this text. In the web.config file, I've registered the DevExpress section that allows us to define settings common for all DevExpress controls. Here, you can see that the current project uses the DevX theme. I can change the theme for each control in my project or for all of the controls in a single place. All of these settings from the DevExpress section can be defined using the project wizard. The project wizard allows you to select any of the available themes. Click Update Project, and now let's take a look at it in the browser. As you can see, the appearance of all the controls have changed. The appearance in the master page has also been changed. Let's go back to Visual Studio. Here you can see that the theme property was changed from DevX to Mulberry. I can also manually change this property. I'll change to Metropolis Blue and reload the browser. And you can see that the new theme has been applied. Let's take a look at the checkbox control. As you can see, the check image is blue. That makes its appearance consistent with other controls. If I inspect this element, I see that the checkbox is actually a span HTML element with the input of text type inside. So this element mimics the native checkbox functionality and provides an ability to apply themes. At the same time, our editors can be rendered as their native equivalent types of the input HTML element. To render the checkbox control as the input of checkbox type, I set its native property to true. And let's run the project in the browser. Here you can see that the checkbox now is black. If I inspect this element, we can see that it's rendered as an HTML input of the checkbox type. The native rendering mode allows you to improve the page performance. 
And that's it. Thanks for watching. And thank you for choosing Dev Express. Thank <laughs> you.